Hi, I'm John Buckheit. I'm back with Fire Engineering for more training minutes. If you've been following along with our series, we've been trying to uh, teach everyone how to deal with common fortifications. And in this next series, we're going to be dealing with uh, chain link fences, which uh, they're, they're found everywhere. You're going to find simple residential fences, which are really just boundary markers, up to uh, some fairly high security commercial interests, all the way up to uh, you might have a prison in your response area, something like that, which is going to have you know, really tall and, and really heavy, heavy gauge and uh, high security chain link fences. Many times in my career, I've, I've come against chain link fences, either trying to stretch hose lines, uh, trying to access a patient or an, an investigation uh, for a source of uh, smoke or something like that. And you, if you hang around long enough, you're bound to, you're bound to run into these. So what we're going to try to do in this, in this first part of the series is teach you how to look at these with an educated eye, improve your size up skill. You, they're, they're all similarly constructed, but they have uh, variations which will enhance or detract from uh, some of the evolutions that we're going to try to uh, teach you how to do. Now, when you look at these fences, you want to try to figure out what that variation is and consider how much damage you're willing to do, how much time you have, what tools you have, and what your goal is. Are you trying to access and transport a patient? Are you trying to uh, place a line or advance a line? Or are you trying to uh, just gain access for fire department personnel or rescue personnel? All of those factors will come together in your size up. And what I'm really trying to encourage you to do is look before you leap, do the size up. Let's take a look at how these fences are made. This is a very simple residential gate, but it has all the features that you're going to find in even the very high security uh, fences. They all have in common is that they're created out of this uh, wire lattice. It's known in the trade as a uh, fabric, wire, wire fabric. The uh, spacing can be tighter, like the fence behind me, which is higher security, harder to climb. The gauge can be light gauge, like this fence, or it can be thicker, like this fence. Under any case, it's going to have some type of support. It may have a top rail. It may just have a wire. It may have nothing. It may have a bottom rail or just a wire. It'll be tied at regular intervals with the wire ties. These are pretty soft, pretty easy to cut. And then it's going to get tensioned horizontally using these tension bars, which slide through the fabric, and then using either a mechanical device or in a simple installation like this, it might be done by hand. In a large fence like this, it might involve using a come along. The fence is going to get tensioned and then attached to either a line post or an end post using this tension clamp. The line posts would be found roughly every 10 feet, typically, along the installation. This is a typical line post. They can be thicker. They can have a greater diameter for a uh, more substantial fence. And then where the fence changes angle or comes against a gate, it's going to have a terminal post. These are thicker, greater diameter, and more securely anchored. All of these features all need to be appraised before you begin your evolution that you're going to use to get through these, these gates. They're all going to influence how well or how poorly your choice is going to help you. Consider the time factor, consider what you're trying to accomplish, the amount of damage you're willing to occur, and all those things all added together would help for a successful operation, and you can decide which of the several evolutions that we're going to present to you, you should use. I'm now going to lead you through just one example of that size up. We have in this scenario, we have a, uh, a, a very heavily used highway above us. The call comes in for uh, a major uh, motor vehicle accident. The initial units get the call. They're up on that elevated highway. They find that one of the vehicles in this high speed crash has left the highway and has crashed down into this uh, side part of the highway. A second unit might get better information they're going to access from this vantage point, and they come against this fence. In this instance, what am I looking at? 
I don't have a top rail. It's just a wire up there. Uh, that's typical for long highways. I don't think they want the horizontal bars because people can get impaled by them. So typically you're going to find just the fabric with a wire or nothing along highways. It has a tight weave and it has a heavy gauge. This would suggest maybe I could ladder this, but missing that top rail and also I'm dealing with patient uh, access and patient transport and I might have to get a heavy equipment in there, hearse tool, something like that. So this is really a, a poor choice for those. I'm going to do a little more size up. I'm going to walk around the corner, take a look. Maybe it's late at night. This might not be obvious. So look before you leap. Take the time to size up. I'm going to come over here and we'll see what we find. So what I'm encouraging is take a few seconds to uh, do a little bit more size up. And as I rounded this fence, what did I find? It's a, it's a lower security, much easier to manipulate this fabric it's poorly tensioned, so we might be able to get rid of this right away. It's, it's only held on by one strand. Or, what do you know, I look even further up the slope here, and the fence has already been removed. So we could do all of our patient care, all of our extrication, move all our equipment in and out via that access, and we're done. So the point is, look, size up the fence in careful detail, think of the principles that we're going to teach you, and then take a good look before you start your operation. You'll be better off. I'm John Buckeye with Fire Engineering Training Minutes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next part of the series.